Hey, this is Chris over at Battle Beaver Customs. And since we launched our version of the overclocking software, which we do not own at all, we just helped facilitate it and get it live, get it out and make it a little bit more secure by getting the drivers signed. Um, a lot of the focus has been on gamepad latency and what that means to gamers when they start overclocking and changing polling rates. I watch a lot of videos of other controller reviewers and people that do a lot of important things in our community and they always focus on polling rates. So I wanted to make a quick video and really showcase this Game Padla's website and the tools that he has available. Primarily the one that we're using today is called the GPDL and it's an Adreno device that literally wires into the controller. Kind of like we do our rear buttons, we wire a wire onto a button contact pad, another onto the ground if it's a common ground styled controller. And the Adreno is going to then fire that button press 2000 times. As it's firing that button press, it is also recording on the computer how long it takes to receive the button press. The issue that we're seeing today is everybody talks about polling rates. Well, polling rates is only half of the story. When you have the computer asking the controller, hey, what is your state over and over again? That's your polling rate. But at some point, the human has to interface with the controller, press the button, and that signal has to get all the way back to the computer then to be given to the game. So what we're gonna do is take the PS5 controller with the GPDL connected and go ahead and plug it into the PC. So the GPDL plugs in, we'll get the computer or the controller plugged into the computer via USB-C. And remember the, when we're talking about overclocking, we're overclocking the actual port on the PC. So we are not, touching anything internally in the controller. Um, and I think that's just really important to note. So with the controller plugged in, we'll do what everybody else does, which is run a test. So you can see here, this PS5 controller is overclocked to 8,000 Hertz on our refresh rate. So that's our, our polling rate. And we're gonna test that with the game Padlet software. Now, to note, the game paddle software can only measure up to a thousand hertz, but the numbers, the actual outputs will be the same. So you, get, you run this in here, you have to rotate your left stick without stopping. Okay. And after you finish that, it automatically uploads your results to their website on your dashboard if you're logged in. So if you see right down here on PS5, it shows our average input latency of 1.67 milliseconds, a minimum of 1.15 and a maximum of 6.98. And you'll see down here, he even notes that latency with an asterisk are based on polling rates and not represent actual input lag. So we're gonna compare this number to using the GPDL of what the actual input latency would be. So with everything hooked up, we'll open the GPDL program. I'll pull over here. So we'll tell it the device is in port three and the controller here is on one. There is a version to also do stick latency testing, which from my test, the results have come out about the same, but it is unique to notice that it actually test the stick going back and forth. Um, so we'll start this button latency test. And this runs automatically, so this is great. You don't have to rotate that left thumbstick. And what this is doing again, it's firing 2000 button presses in, from the GPDL through the computer and the computer is in measuring that output through the port that currently we have right now overclocked. So if you see down here, I have the overclock software pulled up, um, 8000 again on the refresh rate and you can see in real time actually its results so
Okay, and then after it runs its tests, it'll show you your test results. So for this controller, minimal input latency of a 1.17 with an average of 2.19, uh, maximum of 3.12. So we can go ahead and open this on their website. You'd give it a name, let's just say PS5, and we'll say we tested this over a cable, and then boom, it pops it up here. So downside is I've been doing a lot of testing lately, so my dashboard is crammed. Look at all these results. And it is here at the bottom. Now you'll see PS5, your dual sense, and these input numbers. So you can actually add in that this was an 8,000 hertz test on Windows 11, the firmware doesn't matter, and we could submit this, or you have to actually select, oh, did it say, yeah, it's a tool. And it was overclocked, and you can submit that result. So that puts it into the, com the community results. So as of right now, these numbers are actually really close to their theoretical numbers. Um, but what I notice is going through a lot of these third-party controllers that those peaks and valleys are really wide. Um, so these numbers that we have here are a little bit easier to visually represent the tests that I did with the controllers that are in the clock or within my shop. Um, the, Fastest one being our PS5 overclocked at 8,000 hertz at a 2.11 milliseconds input latency uh, compared to a PS5 controller only overclocked at 1,000 hertz, it comes in at 3.44, or you go all the way down to a PS5 controller just fresh out of the box, which would be down here at 7.83 milliseconds. So, significant increases as you overclock the polling rate on your USB port. The biggest increase you'll see here is PS4 going from the default of a 10.4 milliseconds when overclocked to a thousand hertz comes all the way up to 2.89. Um, so to know I stacked up every other controller that we found relevant that I had access to or numbers that I could have pulled off the game Padless site just for comparison. So we have our DualSense Edge almost mirroring the DualSense controller itself. So 2.23 when overclocked out of the box, DualSense Edge is a 1000 Hertz controller to 3.65, which beats out the Scuf and Vision Pro, which beats out the Razer Wolverine V3 Pro when even overclocked to 1000 Hertz polling rate. Um, and a lot of these Third-party manufacturers are saying that their controllers are 1,000, 8,000 hertz controllers, that they're one milliseconds, and that would be true if the controller didn't have to do so much work. So if you can imagine you have two sides of the controller, you have, or inside, this, inside the controller there's a microchip, and one side of the computer is asking over and over again, hey, what's your status, what's your status, what's your status? And the other side is you're pressing buttons and you're moving the thumbstick, well that, chip is having to interpret your button presses and your movements to give them to the computer. So if you have a lot of extra features added in, so you're doing you know, custom thumbstick uh, rampings and different graphs, well the, the controller is having to do a lot of that heavy lifting which adds just a little bit of input latency. So we have controllers like the Vitrix Pro in here, this FlyDigi Apex 4, you know, out of the box, a 6.82 millisecond controller, even though it's a thousand hertz, there's just a lot going on inside the controller. So from our findings, as of right now, the PS5 overclocked is going to be your fastest first party controller in a PlayStation shape. Um, there are a lot of third party controllers out there that are Xbox shaped, that are hit and miss um, around the boards. And I did want to kind of showcase the GamePad little website. So as you, you have all, the results, you know, these are my per, my personal result dashboard. If you go to their site, they'll actually list out a lot of controllers and they'll show either verified or user verified. And wanted to show what the differences mean in these numbers if you start to poke around on their site. Um, take the DualSense Edge, for example. You go down, you'll see resolution or you go to average chart. I like the bar chart, it makes a little more sense to me. Um, You'll see button, button, stick, button, stick. These are actual input 
variables. So the fastest measuring button or stick are about a 2.23. Um, ironically, you'll see that I'm the one that uploaded both of those. So we are to take a different controller. So we did like the, the Razer, for example. Um, you're gonna have two different ones. So you have, these are your polling rates. So when you get in here, you're gonna see some of these that are down here, these sub one millisecond. So they're trying to say that this controller theoretically should be achieving a one millisecond input latency, just based on what the controller is capable of. But when wired up, when actually running a button, you know, here, these are button input tests, these are stick input tests. And this will tell you if it's on a dongle, so if it's running wireless or a cable being direct wired to the computer, these are their, the input latencies. So as you're looking and you're testing different controllers and games, like this is a community driven site that has been fantastic. Um, I recommend it at a minimum when you're using our overclock or not our overclock software, but the overclock software that we helped um, get the driver signed for is you're using that software to, you can open up game Pavla, quickly test your controller to confirm that your overclock is actually in effect. If it's not, you know, if the overclock says that it's in there, but you go to test it and it says it's only at 250 Hertz, then your installation may not be correct. So that's a surefire way to make, to have on there that your controller is actually overclocked ready for use. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions or want any other controllers added to this graph, we're gonna, we went ahead and published this graph at the bottom of battleyourcustoms.com slash pages slash overclocking. Um, this is the installation directions for the overclock program. But at the bottom, you'll see our testing results in the graph. So there are other controllers that we can test, or as we do other testing, we'll, we'll update this graph periodically just to show where stuff is landing in the real world. So until next time, send any questions you have. Thanks.